Welcome to The Performance Show, a videocast interviewing athletes, coaches, and sports scientists from around the globe. Please welcome your host, Lachlan Puyol from Puyol Athletic Development and Performance. Welcome to episode 23 of The Performance Show. Uh, ATP doubles player Oliver Mirage from Austria joins us. Oliver, thanks so much for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation. No problem. So your last tournament that you played uh, was the Paris Rolex Masters, partnering uh, Rowan Vipana. You guys made it to the quarterfinals. What has your preparation been like um, now getting ready for AO 2021? Well, for me, the, the, the main goal was to get fit again because um, during our first lockdown in Panama, it was very tough for me to practice. We had a very strict lockdown from March on um and panama was divided in districts so i had i i have i can, i couldn't break practice in the city which was a big problem um and then uh, i i went to the beach side which is one and a half hours away here and i ha i'm in a project where i could at least be outside um could play a little bit tennis but basically in this four and a half months of lockdown i could practice two weeks so i went very unprepared to the start of the season again in the US Open. I had overweight, I was not fit at all, so uh, I had a tough time there. So my main goal is now in the next uh, four to five weeks to get really fit for the next season again. You're training full time, you're in Panama at the moment. Um, how, what's your schedule like in sort of, sort of like training per day? How much fitness are you doing? How much time are you practicing on the court? Yeah, I, I have to say, for me, I have to say for me, because these young guys, they practice a lot, but I'm 40 years old, so I'm one of the oldest on the tour. Um, I did a lot, actually. I did, uh, in the first week I've started, I started with one and a half hours fitness a day um, in the morning, then one and a half again in the afternoon. And now the second week I did, I combined it with tennis. So I had some days where I had like almost five and a half hours also sport because I do some other, I, I like to play, um, for example, paddle and squash, so I combine it a little bit. Um, and now th this week we start with, uh, yeah, with almost, um, it's one and a half, two, so three and a half hours just fitness per day. And how is my body feeling, of course, depending on uh, continuing with tennis. Um, I mean, I'm also at the beach doing fitness at the beach in the sand. It's even more difficult, so we mix it up to have everything around me and i saw on your instagram feed that you're doing yoga and some pilates do you feel like that yeah. that's really helping the body <laughs> yeah i mean i during the week i don't do that but on my day off i have day off on sunday i do one day off in the week so then i join in with uh put in some pilates or some yoga i really like to do that it's it, it's it's also very difficult it's not like everybody oh yeah we do yoga a little bit stretching it's not at all it's it's really difficult workout also and and pilates has a lot of opportunities too so it's really rough on your body we did it yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning even my fitness coach she struggled but it's always good to mix it up i say that your body is not getting used to one thing and you always can get better in, in every day by every certain amount because the problem is if you just practice let's say i do one week just always the same your different body types um or muscles are used to get they, they shouldn't get used to, to to do one thing they should get prepared of everything and then you have the best um input to to raise your level very fast so it sounds more of a like a multi-dimensional approach holistic approach if you like to your training yes exactly yeah so starting 2021 and obviously you want to play in the australian open are there any other tournaments that you're hoping to play while you're in australia Well, it's well, we, we don't even know yet what's going to happen. I mean, we have no calendar. We are still waiting. It's for sure very tough for, for Tennis Australia, for ATP we, to, to combine it with the government rules. Um, because first they told us we have to come early to Australia around the 12th and 14th of December already because of two weeks quarantine. Then they told us we, players are not allowed to come after the 1st of January. Uh, now the ATP Cup got cancelled. We don't know what tournament is going to 
and back us to what we're going to play next year. What will be the calendar? It's really, really difficult to, to say anything now about that because we nobody knows yet. So it's really tough. It's uneasy times at the moment and it has been since, since March of this year. And I guess preparation for the entire tour is so difficult because you've got a quarantine. There's not much time to prepare or to practice. Um, I know that you're looking for a doubles partner. You were kind of saying that last week when we were um, on the Tennis House uh, webinar. How's that been going for you? Well, I'm still looking. I mean, I still have no partner because I have to see how will be the calendar. What we saw now in the first 10 weeks is you don't have like, no, normally we have weeks in the year where we have two free tournaments in a week. So there, you know, the cut, some tournaments, the cut will be not as strong. Now we had like, let's say we have one 500 and one 250, the 500, you cannot play. I mean, in Vienna, for example, I was with Raven class and our combined ranking was 37. So it's 18, both in the world. And we were not in the main draw. So, which is ridiculous. You cannot be, I mean, you're 18 combined in a ranking and you can't get in in the 500. So it's, it's really tough. So. That's why I have no partner yet because I, ne I have to see next year if we just have one or two tournaments a week, I need a very good ranked guy to get in even. I mean, I'm, I, I think I'm still top 30 um, and uh, I need at least a guy also around that uh, to be able to maybe play at the tournament. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm waiting and, and that's the only reason why I have no partner yet. And someone who's ranked 18 in the world in singles would probably be seeded in an ATP 500. So that's kind of crazy that you weren't even in the main draw. Now, now speaking of doubles partners, partners, you had a number of different doubles partners back in 2019. So last year you played with Dan Evans, uh, Raven Klasan, as you were saying, Nugent Melty, your countryman, Mate Pavic. What is something that you look for in a, in a doubles partner? Well, I mean, the for my game, the best success for sure I had with Mate Pavic. I mean, we, we played uh, one and a half, two years. We were number one team in the world. Uh, we won a Grand Slam. And um, with him, I, I, it was a really very good uh, communication on the court. He, he has a great serve. He's a lefty, which is a big advantage. So um, you don't have, you have to see also sometimes when you play outside and the sun is in a different spot with the lefty and the righty serve, you always have um, a little advantage. You can choose the sides where you serve, where you have two righty guys, one has to look in the sun. So one, one is, has, is, for him it's more difficult, yeah? So with, with a lefty-righty combination, it, this is one thing which, which is a benefit. Then, um, of course, he... Our combo was, we were two different players. I think for, from my point of view is when you have two different game styles, it's difficult for the others to get the rhythm too. So Mate has a great serve, has a, has a good first volley and has great returns. And he's, what for me, he did very well for my game is he was crossing. He, he saw he, who could, uh, I play from the back and he could cross in the right moment and cover the court. So that was very good because I am not a typical doubles player. I play like, Sometimes like singles guys, I play from the back. Um, now in the last weeks, I played also some service wallet to surprise the other guys, but mainly I play from the back and, and try to hit from my ground strokes. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, also with, with Raven, I should play the whole year. Um, this year, of course, we would be set, but the problem was just we, at the beginning, we had a little slow start. Then in Dubai and Rotterdam, we started playing really well. And then came the... Uh, the COVID <laughs> and we were out for, for four or five months and when we started again, as I said, we both had, he had also a tough time in, in South Africa, he couldn't practice a lot and uh, we started just horrible and, and then losing a lot of first rounds, the confidence is getting down, we sat together in, after Roland Garros and we said, uh, yeah, it's, it's the best, we, we're gonna we're going to go separate ways. We don't do us a favor if we just stick together because we're in tournaments and we don't enjoy, you know, and, and, and uh, losing always first round is, is really tough in tennis and, and uh, nobody loves that. And yeah, that's why we decided to go different ways. Yeah. That's why um, also I had some other partners. Um, I played with Danny Evans in Vienna. Then I, sh I should play first in Vienna and Paris with Ivan Dodik. 
um, but the, he got COVID one day before entering. So that was a little bit bad luck. Um, so then I had to look for somebody. That's why I asked Danny to play in, in, in Vienna. And we were, we were very lucky because Vienna was so strong and we got the wild card from the tournament director, which was very nice. And then um, in uh, Paris, um, I got also last in with Rohan, with Popana, which was also very lucky. And we played really two good matches and lost against a very good team against Meltzer and Vaseline, who were now in the finals, in the uh, NITO finals. And uh, yeah, was was the last the last two three weeks I played better again. I was really happy about my performance, and I could feel like okay. And now I have to really start getting ready, getting fit, and and try one more time next year. Yeah. But so far, I, I have to see how, how it will be. I know that you want to play with someone who has a higher ATP doubles ranking to get into tournaments. Now, have you thought out or thought about playing with a singles player who? you feel like would be very dominant in doubles? Well, I have, I, I for sure have thought about it, but a, a singles player is, um, he's focused on singles. Yeah, it doesn't mean he's a bad doubles player, but when he has to, when he has, a, let's say, a lot of tough matches and it's very, very difficult for him, then some of them, I have to say, they have to, yeah, they don't focus, sorry. They, they, they have to focus and um, then they're getting tired a little bit. I was playing very long with one guy who was a singles player um, and uh, then it was tough having five sets in Grand Slams. And of course you want to do your money also in doubles by understanding the singles guys to do more money in, in the singles and that's their priority. So you have to, really see uh, the best is if they say okay singles guy he might say okay Wimbledon I'm not gonna play because Wimbledon is tough best of best of five on grass court on the body is really brutal I have to say um, but um, because the doubles is best of five too that's what most people don't know but best of five doubles and singles that that's tough that's a lot um, of but yeah a lot but for example when when he when he can say okay i play with you the big tournament so that means the thousands um and the grand slams and maybe one or two five hundreds depends that's cool you know and for sure i, I believe that some singles guys would be much better uh, could level up the game a little bit learning approaching to the net better volleys so maybe they can learn out of the doubles also some more stuff more solid volleys um yeah but um, i am i was i'm always one in my career i i prefer not to look the ranking i prefer who fits to me so i i took in my career a lot of guys who were even behind me in the ranking and building up a, a good spirit and a good teamwork working hard uh, and find a game style which suits us and I had really some some good success with some guys like three four guys uh, and and we get together up and they they went in the top 30 20 even top 10 with them and was really was really nice this is also nice stories not to to start lower and and get the game up and increase the ranking that's also cool and in 2018 but right now it's tough <laughs> i know it's, I, tough. it's so tough um in, yeah. in, in 2018 yourself and, and mate pavic won your maiden grand slam uh, the australian open uh, you won Doha and Auckland prior to that. Now, I was just looking up in the seven matches that you had to win the tournament. Four of those matches went to a third set. And the quarterfinal and the semi-final match, you guys both won 7-6 in the third set. So uh, the big question is, how, how do you handle yourself under pressure? Well... <laughs> it, 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 that would be been easy. <laughs> it's a tough answer. I mean... <laughs> In this moment, in this moment, we were just full of confidence. And this is the a main key in doubles. If you have confidence, you don't think about, oh, now it's an edge point. Oh, now it's an important point. The best way is you, you don't think and you just play. Uh, that's when you have confidence. And we came in in the Australian Open with to two wins. Um, and for me, it was crazy because I was injured in December. I didn't hit one ball I in my back. I came to Doha. I, I practiced two times. We won the tournament without losing a set. 
then we travel on Sunday to Oakland, where this the long one of the longest flights, 16 hours flight to Oakland. We just hit 30 minutes. Next day a match again, win the tournament again, and we were really tired already. But as I said, confidence. I mean, winning seven six in a third for me is both teams. So it's just sometimes luck. Yeah, I mean, against Struff, against Struff and McLagan. This was lucky because uh, in the third set at 4-3, I remember they had a break point and Struffy missed the easy volley forehand that could be finished for us. Uh, but he missed that volley and, and Mate came to me, so now we win the match and we won it. So that's the, the, you, you say that when you have confidence, normally you don't, don't say that. And in the final, we had, the, I would say, a little advantage already played the final the year before in Wimbledon and we went a little bit different in the final as in Wimbledon and, and, and the Columbians uh, we played in the final as our Cabal Parade they, what, this was their first final and they didn't play their best tennis and and um, yeah we, we took the chance and uh, yeah that was that was amazing I mean winning a Grand Slam my favorite Grand, Grand Slam I have to say because Australia I, I love this country I would live there if it wouldn't be so far away <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was a dream come. Yeah, the big the big problem with um, living in Australia as a as a tennis player is that it's so far away from the rest of the tour. The the, the rest of the tour is you know, either yeah. in Europe or it's in in North America. Um, now you said that you were so confident. I guess playing well on big points um, is the big key. Yes, I mean, I was always one. When I have confidence, I like to take add points. I mean, I, I think I'm really good in in the in these years where I played well. I was really good in converting um, the add points and was was really dangerous on returns. And um, I, I I like to do that. I mean, before when I played singles and starting doubles, I mean, we didn't have at the beginning add points. It was a normal system, but I was. Um, yeah, I, I some somehow I, I like to get that feeling. Oh, now it's ni nice eight point. I I take it, but of course you talk with a doubles partner. If a guy shoots shoots you uh, two two aces on your side and you make two double falls on the other one, you're not gonna go to your partner. Hey, I take it. Yeah, you, right. It's gonna. You said you take it. He, <laughs> you also have to look like where the other guy didn't like to serve or where he did more points on the return game. So. In the, in the last couple of years, and I'm sure throughout your career, you, you made the final of Wimbledon and also final of um, Monte Carlo playing with, with Mate. Mm -hmm. the, the way that you play doubles on different surfaces, does that change at all? Going from clay to grass over to the hard courts? Um, well, I mean, the way, yeah, a little bit, of course, in, in, on clay court, you have more rallies. You cannot just play over service volley. Uh, the good thing is Mate, I mean, I play anyway from the back, so for me it's not a big difference. I just try to surf better, I mean, to have more free points on hard court and where it's faster on clay court, surf always aces is not possible. Um, but uh, Mate had also the possibility to play from the back, has a very good forehand. So uh, we mix it up a little bit on clay, I would say. But on the rest surfaces, it's pretty equal. I mean, it's I mean, grass court, hard court. It's a pretty equal game style, and you don't change a lot. Yeah. There. And I just just watching you on a you know, on a few YouTube videos, you've got that big left serve. I'm sure you like to use that to go out wide um, and drag the player off the court. Mm -hmm. Well, it it depends on clay court. That's. It, uh, if it's a slow clay court, I don't think it's a great serve because I like to cut it, don't use a lot of speed, but it takes the curve earlier. Huh? On, on a hard court where it slides away from somebody, it's good because I stand pretty in the middle on eye formation. So the guys normally think I, I serve T, which I can, and my toss is always the same. So they can't read it always. So that's that's the good thing about it. But um, I think it's not one serve. You, you, the, the key in doubles is to mix it up. And if you have in your um, in in your repertoire, you have um, more service possibilities, your spots, and you can pick them. That's why I really like to go serving half an hour every day. Uh, pick your targets and really serve every spot there. And when you come. To the game and let's say uh, okay on deuce I surf in the in the middle 
uh, and then the next use I serve white, the next serve I induce I serve on the body. Not always the same. That's the great uh, success I think in doubles. I think as human beings, we're we're such creatures of habit, and mixing it up, putting in variety, um, can win yeah. you a lot of free points because they're not expecting the same serve. Exactly. So it's not all about. Um, I think of like Ivo Karlovic. I'm sure he's got one of the best serves in the world. But if you served it so hard at the same spot, then eventually it's not as effective yeah. as what it could be. I mean, or, or, for example, John Isner plays, played sometimes doubles and I played a couple of times against John and his service is, is incredible. But I struggle more against him if he would change it as I know where he served because it comes in the same speed and you just block it. So I really like to, to play and, and return his serve I, I, I returned that better, that hard serve, as a variety serve with, with slice or, or a heavy kick. So that's more difficult for me as a, for me as a returner. There are other guys prefer other things. Yeah? But for me, I really like it more when somebody just bump it and it's flat and I just block it on the return. Now, against, it's, it's interesting you say that against John Eisner. I mean, he's serving at 230 kilometers plus per hour. Yeah. Um, do you find it easier to stand way back behind the baseline or do you try and take a serve like that sort of more on the rise? I mean, I play on the ad side and John, I played him once. Uh, one time I played him in Indian Wells against him and, and, and Sock. They, I mean, John, if John hits the wide serve with 130 miles, I mean, you can stand there, whatever. On the one hand, the back end, it's, it's tough. I can mainly lob it and to play a really solid return, it's tough. Yeah. Um, standing back, I wouldn't do that in doubles. Standing back and the first serve, far back, returning back. They are too good to good doubles teams. They play eye formation. They wait a little bit longer in the middle and your return needs to be really good and hard. I mean, and John staying back when he kicks it, I mean, you, you run out of the court. So I, I, I prefer taking the return early. Um, but there are also some guys who can stay back and hit hard. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't prefer that. I think, I think 80% of the guys take a return early or even more. And with two big guys at the net, you know, John, John Eisner is 6'10". I think Jack Sock is around 6'4". When they're both, it's tough. It's what tough. do you, I mean, you can lob, but you're going to have to hit a very good lob. Do you go, do you try and go around them in the alleys? Do you try and go down the middle? Do you try and dip it? Well, the, the thing is, Jack is very active at the net. He's very good. He's very fast. So it's, it's tough to go. I mean, I like my, my, normally my returns are at somebody hard. Yeah. But if somebody serves 130, I can. Just hope it's it's a good return, um, and it, it has to be good because they cover a lot. Or a cheap lob when they're very close to the net, a cheap lob would be good. But these guys, yeah, it it was it was really at this day. I mean, we had no chance. It was tough. They were everything covering. Jack was crossing, and they have two different serves. John bombs it, and Jack has an incredible kick serve and hard. So, uh, yeah. For me, anyway, Sok is one of the best individual doubles players on the tour. He is a, he can play unbelievable doubles. It's crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a tough day at this time. <laughs> last last question. Um, I know the Australian Open was probably one of the highlights of your career. Do you have an overall sort of highlight? I mean, I, of course, it's my when you win a Grand Slam, it's my absolutely highlight. But I mean, I also played with Lukas Kubot very well. When we came up, we, we started with nothing. We were fighting in challenges to get in in the, our first Grand Slam in Australia. We were the second last team in, in Australia. We beat the number one in the world, second round in Australia in doubles. We played semi-final and then our story started first year Nito final second year Nito final so two years in a row that's also something nice you build up a, a story you know get together back up there that's really cool um I, I win a lot of other tournaments also with with other guys every every tournament you win especially you know, and, and I, I share with every every guy I win a tournament um 
special moments and 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 want to thank them also because it was really highlights of my career and I cannot forget also the Davis Cup is for me also super special. I mean, winning at the Davis Cup, uh, playing at home, it's it's an amazing feeling. Um, last Davis Cup was in my home, in my birth city in Graz against Uruguay, and it was uh, amazing for me. I I love to play Davis Cup when I can, when I get the possibility, and and, and for me it's also an absolutely highlight and an honor to play that. Yeah, and. The team going forward um, in the in the ATP Cup. I mean, Dominic. If Dominic plays singles, you've got a top five player there. And then if, I'm, I'm guessing you play with Jurgen Meltzer um, or Sebastian Offner. Well, no way. I mean, you, you, I think Jurgen wanna play ATP Cup, but Jurgen has a new position now in Austria. He will be the sports director um, of the Austrian Federation, and and he will play Australian Open. Uh, maybe Wim, uh, I think Wimbledon with Petschner, he will train now again to make a, if, if Wimbledon will be played with fans, he will play with Petschner there, he will play a few more tournaments, but just less, he will take the position, I think, in February. Um, and yeah, ATP Cup, I mean, now it's cancelled, but we have also Davis Cup. I think Alexander Peya is practicing again, he was out for two years. And he has, uh, uh, I think his ranking has a very good protected ranking. So if he gets fit again and and is playing, he has for sure the advantage. He has the best ranking from our, all of us. So so we have to see how how it will go if we play Davis Cup next year. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen. So we have to live week by week, month by month, and then let's see how the calendar looks. And then we have to see who has the best, better ranking, who who can play and who is fit. Hopefully the cases drop after maybe after the vaccine comes out. We never know when it's going to be, um, but yes. yeah, finger, fingers crossed we can kind of get over this whole mess, this whole pandemic. Yeah, and um, it's, I, it, it's been brutal for the whole world, and I hope this is going to end soon. Yeah. I wish you the best for the um, for the future. Best for best of luck for AO twenty twenty one. I wish I could be there, but. Um, Travel these days is very, very tough with the cost of flights. Yeah. So thanks so much for your time, Oliver, and um, all the best. Anytime. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys.